If you're new around here, I'm Kara and this is my husband, Nate. Our goal is to visit 100 countries by the end of the year. So yesterday, we boarded a train and rode 10 hours from Italy to our 92nd country of Switzerland. And it also happens to be Swiss National Day. We've heard that most of the Swiss actually go into the countryside to celebrate, but since we don't have any Swiss friends to invite us, we are here in Zurich and we are heading to a parade. The Swiss have been celebrating their National Day since 1891. The holiday commemorates the formation of a protective alliance between three cantons back in the 13th century. This alliance was the start of the unification that eventually became Switzerland. I'm sure on a normal day in Zurich there aren't people walking around in traditional clothes, there aren't people blowing big horns, but I feel like as a tourist this is how you've always pictured Switzerland in your head, and this is exactly what you want to see. It's amazing. <laughs> So just wandering around the lakeshore. We learned there's a big bathing culture here in Zurich, so all the locals were taking advantage of the perfect summer weather, hanging out by the water, enjoying the sunshine. Oh gosh. Do we go together? I think I'm gonna need to go with you. I think okay. you need to hold my hand. Right. Right. <laughs> there. There. <laughs> oh, this it feels really nice. I really don't like jumping off the thing. <laughs> Apparently the thing to do in Zurich in the summer is jump in the river and just float down. There's so many people. 
We brought a dry bag with some holes in it. <laughs> Not very dry bag. I guess this is what you do when you live in a landlocked country. It is insane how many people are here. And they're all like local people just hanging out. Then we made our way into the old town where the architecture made it feel like we were walking through a medieval movie set. We've only been here for a day, but we are loving Switzerland and feel like we really missed out by waiting so long to travel here. If you look at a map of all of the countries that we've been to, Switzerland pretty much sits as an island inside of Europe surrounded by a bunch of other countries that we've already marked off our list. And that was kind of intentional because we've always viewed this as a place that would be too expensive for us to enjoy. Especially back in 2016 when our budget was $75 per day and our hotel alone is double that per night. Let's just say it's a good thing we waited until now. This street that we're walking down now is actually one of the most expensive retail streets in the entire world. $16,900. That one says $21,000. 25. One of the things that's been really fun about walking around today is there's a ton of these shops that have fancy watches in them and most of them have price tags. So you can tell that you're standing face to face with a $50,000 watch. So we have officially been in Switzerland for almost exactly 24 hours now and we have made a tragic mistake. We have not had Swiss chocolate yet. So we're on the hunt. Let's go. Hello, Kara from the future here. Every chocolate shop that we tried to go in yesterday was closed, but today they're open again, so we are finally going to try our first Swiss chocolate. Oh, you did. I cannot believe this. The chocolate shop that we really, really wanted to go to today just closed. But the lady in there was so nice. She had literally just closed the register, so she had no way of taking our money, so she just gave us two pieces of chocolate. Because I was so upset. <laughs> I think it was Kara's face. It was so sweet of her. So this isn't the only chocolate shop in Zurich, but it's extra special and we really wanted to try this one. <laughs> so I love all chocolate. I really don't discriminate, but I really love dark chocolate, which is why I was so excited to try this place, because they have this special patented cold extraction method that's supposed to make the dark chocolate less bitter, kind of like a cold brew coffee that's less bitter than a regular coffee. Okay, this is it, my first Swiss dark chocolate. Mm. Mm. Wow. Okay, that's crazy. This is 80% dark chocolate. Not bitter at all. Super smooth, like milk chocolate. That's 80%. This is nuts. Okay, now back to real life. So it seems like almost everything in the city is closed at this point. There really hasn't been much going on since the parade this morning. Now we've actually heard from a couple locals that the majority of people who live in the city use this day to leave the city. So we're going to take a cue from the locals and get picnic supplies and go eat it by the lake at sunset. And apparently everyone else in Zurich decided that was a good idea too because there are like a million people here. Some of the shelves are empty. This is crazy. He was. So <laughs> many people. This, this is awesome. A continuous mile long picnic party. Do you have picnic parties? Yeah. If there ever was one, <laughs> we were at a picnic party. <laughs> Our picnic consists of CD croissants, some cold meat, Swiss cheese, Swiss Riesling. <laughs> And this bun called a uh, August Wiggin? I think it's August Wheatley. Wheatley. August Wheatley. <laughs> it's Swiss thing and it has a Swiss flag and it's National Day, so. It's amazing. Bees like it too. <laughs> Ended up 
spending a couple more days in Zurich creating content for a new hotel that just opened up. It was a super busy couple of days, but of course we made time to try a few foods that Switzerland is famous for, starting with the much anticipated cheese fondue. One would have been funny. The guy was like, yeah, for sure too. For sure try to. They literally give you a basket of bread to dip into your own bottle of cheese. This is the dinner of my drinks. The next day, we went and searched for a slightly healthier option. The restaurant that we were about to go eat at holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the oldest continuously operating vegetarian restaurant in the world. A lot of qualifiers, but we've heard the food's supposed to be very good. This Sunday is huge. There's way too many. So the dangerous thing about this place is they charge you based on how much your plate weighs. And with that many beautiful vegetarian options, you could really get yourself in trouble. Thankfully, we made a couple rounds first, we made a plan. We kept it under a kilo each, but that does include the plate. I basically got half a plate of all green, beautiful, fresh vegetables and the other half fried stuff. <laughs> a big plate of greens is much needed after last night's two pots of fondue. <laughs> this is like, the perfect meal for after that. Either that or an entire plate of prunes. TMI. I actually ate cheese for breakfast this morning. We ended our time in Zurich the best way we could think of. Chocolate fondue. It's hard to imagine how life could get any better right now. Ready? No, I'll hold my hand. No, I can't hold your hand. I have to hold the camera. Okay. Good? Don't hold my arm. Don't hold my arm. Don't hit no, me. No, stay close. Okay. Don't. <laughs> it's like 10 feet. Okay. No. I hope I have this tight. One. Oh, I really need like a wrist strap or something for this. 